Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be reacting to a TV show called The Resident. I've never seen this show before and I asked on my Instagram story what show I should react to and a lot of you said The Resident. So I'm going to start with season one, episode one, just start right from the beginning. I'm excited to see what this show's about because I've heard a few people talk about it before. I've seen Dr. Mike do a few of these reaction videos and they came out really funny so I thought I would do one from a nurse's point of view. All right, I'm ready to watch the show so let's get right into it. Wait, I'm going to take a quick selfie. He's waking up. I need to up the placebo. Oh my god. <sighs> okay, so there's a lot of things wrong here. The first thing is these people were taking, I guess it was the nurses and the resident, were taking pictures in the OR, selfies with the patient in the background. Um, second of all, the patient woke up in the middle of surgery and opened their eyes. Anesthesia tapes the eyes right after induction, so the patient's eyes weren't taped. Their anesthesia would have had to have been off and there would have been a ton of signs before it came to this point. So unless somebody was just ignoring everything and there was no anesthesia taking care of the patient, that would not happen. He's lost at least two liters already. Come on, come on. We just lost a pulse PA rest. CPR isn't gonna put all that blood back into his body. Don't die on me. It's no use. The patient coded because they lost two liters of blood after he nicked an artery and he coded within two seconds of losing that blood, which just was really crazy. Out, it all went down. That didn't look like two liters of blood. Um, they weren't even suctioning the blood. And then the patient coded, they coded him for a second and then yelled, there's no use and stopped the code and called time to death. This was a pretty young looking patient. I'm guessing he was relatively healthy if they were only in there for an appendectomy. And um, they called time to death within like one, not even one round of compressions. They didn't even give epi. So that was just wild. So far, I'm really impressed with this show and it's off to a great start. Let's see what else they're gonna do. Well, I think we can all agree. It was the misdose SIVO that led this unfortunate situation. Maybe he had a heart attack. This bone here is the acromion. We have two hundred and six bones and I can name each one. I don't know about you guys, but it is such a turn on when somebody can name every single bone in your body and point them out. Just saying. Excuse me, nurse. Devin. Nick. I need a new resident. Mine's impossible. Okay, I guess theoretically a nurse could be in charge of the resident assignments, but I've never seen that occur. And I really like how he referred to her as, hey nurse. Hey nurse, I need a new resident. Um, I don't think it works like that, but okay. How do you get that cheeseburger, Chad? Delivery app. It looks like you haven't been following your diet. Diet's not work. Have you been taking your insulin? I don't want to lick your neck. I'm here because my toe's killing me. Okay, this part's pretty realistic. I've had patients sneak food, order food, get the food they're not supposed to have some kind of way. I've definitely seen feet look like this before. New admission, 21-year-old girl, history of IV drug use, likely endo. She was trying to steal that lot and now she wants to leave AMA. She's been spiking fever, vomiting. She's using again. She hey, took hey. all my money and put it on oxygen. All right, listen to me. <laughs> I've encountered a ton of situations like this, but the first ones that come to my mind are the time we had a patient that was swinging an IV pole at the nurses and chasing them around. And another time I had a patient who was threatening to stab me to death because I wouldn't give him any more Dilaudid. This situation's pretty common in the ER and in the ICU. We have patients who are withdrawing from drugs or on drugs and they come in fighting and very out of control. So I'm interested to see what they do to control the situation and help her calm down. Throughout your body, classic for endocarditis and infection of the heart valve. Happens to drug users all the time. That's true. If you walk out of here without any antibiotics, this will kill you. Chloe, baby! Get a crash cart. Come with oh, me, baby. I'm not getting a pulse. What's the rhythm? PEA. Should we shock? No, we can't. The rhythm's not shocked. Well, get me one of Epi. Okay. They had not shocked a unshockable rhythm yet, so this code's off to a good start. Harder, man. You need to feel the ribs crack. <laughs> 
if you do compressions too fast, you don't allow enough time for chest recoil, which means you don't allow enough time for the heart to refill with blood. So you're basically compressing an already emptied heart and you're not circulating any blood. That guy's yelling harder, faster compressions that you need to feel the ribs crack. He seems kind of like he's very stressed out right now. I said that's enough. Okay, I had to pause it again because her rhythm just came back during compressions, which doesn't make any sense. You wouldn't be able to tell that during compressions. Like you're compressing the chest, so you're not gonna have a rhythm while you're doing that. You're gonna have like artifact. So he's compressing the chest and her rhythm came back perfectly and she was flatlined while he's compressing. None of that really makes any sense. You came in here all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed ready to save lives, but today you didn't save a life, you saved a brainstem. And there's still plenty of good doctors and nurses trying to do the right thing. I'm a little confused about who this nurse is or what her role is. I was thinking at first she might be the nurse practitioner working along with the physician team, but now I'm a little bit confused about what her role is. Is she an ICU nurse? Is she the nurse practitioner? Is she the nurse supervisor? Hopefully they tell us at some point. The pressure is low 80 over 40. It was 120 over 90 a minute ago. Lily. 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 Stolic's fluctuating, but it's not good. We're three liters in already. It's sepsis. Want me to give norepi preferably? No. Get a central line. Norepi, norepinephrine is a vasopressor. That's what they were talking about. And yes, you can give it peripherally, especially in an emergency situation. You just have to have the right concentration. That central line placement makes me hurt. Okay, first of all, she was not sterile. Second of all, that is not what a central line kit looks like and they didn't really prep. Third of all, you do not just make an incision with a scalpel when you're doing it in central line. That's not even how it works. I don't even know what he threaded the guide wire through. He made an incision with a scalpel and then threaded the guide wire through his incision. So he was never in the vein. He never used a finding needle. He never even had a catheter. I'm really confused about what happened. And then he didn't check placement at all and she just hooked it straight up to the IV. I don't understand. That was definitely not a central line. That seems like a subcutaneous line. A subcutaneous line isn't a real thing. I just said that as a joke, just in case you were wondering. When her pressure level's out, wean her off the norepi and then drown her in fluids. He just said when her pressure level's out, wean her off the norepi and drown her in fluids. Now there's a lot wrong with that suggestion. First of all, her pressure isn't gonna level out until you fix the underlying problem. Norepinephrine will keep her pressure up, but it's not fixing the underlying problem. And if he thinks she's hypovolemic and that's the underlying problem, she needs the fluids to be weaned off the norepi, not after she's weaned off the norepi. Where's Chloe's family? They just left for the first time. The mom was sleeping in there in case she woke up. I really feel that statement about the patient's family leaving for the first time. It's really hard for patient's families to leave them when they're very vulnerable and very sick. So usually somebody stays at all times and it's really important that people take care of themselves when their loved ones are sick. So we always encourage them to make sure that they eat, they drink, they take care of themselves as well. People put their family members first, especially when it's a spouse or a child or something like that. Annabeth, five, she had cancer. I was her first year just like you. I gave her too much potassium. She died from me, not the cancer. That is a major medical error, and I wonder how much potassium they gave her. And it's good that he remembers and he's related to this other doctor, but I don't know. I don't really have a good vibe off this guy. He seemed kind of like rude and like a bully. Um, he just turned the ventilator off and was trying to end patient's care with no permission from anybody. 
which is crazy. I feel like I've said something's crazy in the show a million times, but the show is pretty wild. There is some truth to the feelings and everything, the dynamic that's going on in this show, but they're really crossing the line in a lot of places. You can't just turn somebody's ventilator off. If you did just turn somebody's ventilator off, their nurse would know because everything would start alarming. He, tur he silenced the vent alarms, but he didn't silence the monitor alarms. The nurses can also in the ICU see the monitors from out of the nurse's station. So if a patient's ventilator was turned off, they would start desatting, which means their oxygen saturation would go down, their blood pressure would drop, their heart rate would drop, just everything would end up bad. And um, the nurse would definitely notice that. You wouldn't be able to just sit in a patient's room and wait for them to die without anybody noticing. So that was pretty bizarre. A good thing his little nurse buddy came in, helped him out and turned it back on. The realisticness of the show is questionable. I would say the medical scenarios were actually very realistic. They had a leukemia patient come in with sepsis, which is very common when you're on chemotherapy, your immune system's down and you can get septic. And then they had a endocarditis patient come in that was a drug abuser. That happens very often too from injecting drugs into your veins. They have infections that spread endocarditis. It's very common in this patient population. So their medical scenarios were kind of on point, but what they were doing and their reactions were not. They were stepping over the line. They were doing stuff that was inappropriate. They were doing procedures incorrectly. They were doing bizarre stuff, trying to cover it up. That one Conroy Conrad, now I can't remember his name, was definitely a bully. I still want to know who that nurse is. I don't really understand her role. She kind of seems to be all over the hospital. I'm interested to watch another episode of this. I think there's two seasons of it. It was definitely entertaining because of the drama and everything that was going on that was crazy. Overall, I'd give it about a 5 out of 10 on a like realistic scale. And then on a drama and entertaining scale, I'd give it like an eight or nine out of 10 because it definitely was entertaining. All the dynamics between all the different personalities was entertaining. That's it for now because the episode was 43 minutes long and maybe I'll do another one of these in the future if you guys like it. Definitely comment below what show you want me to watch next because this was pretty fun to do. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you have a wonderful week and as always, I will see you next week. <music>